Hi everyone. Today we're going to take a look at working with effects within Pro Tools. Um, we're primarily going to take a look at signal routing and how to use buses and aux returns to achieve things such as delays and reverbs and all different sorts of effects that you might want to use within your session. Uh, for the purposes of our demonstration, we're going to use a vocal track, but just keep in mind that these, these techniques that we're going to look at, these apply to everything that you're going to do from a mix perspective. So here we are in our Pro Tools session. We have this track right here, which is a, a vocal track, and we'll be using this for the purposes of this demonstration. Now, uh, just so you can hear it real quick. Another magical day, the sun reflects on your face. Okay, so there's not much going on. It's just the vocal, and it's actually being soloed, so you're not hearing any of the other vocals or backings. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to demonstrate how you can achieve effects and effects returns within Pro Tools to allow you to more effectively mix and get the sort of sounds that you're really looking for within your song and, uh, and your mix. So for most of this, we're going to go over to the mix window. So let's just go up to the window menu, select mix, and notice that the uh, keyboard shortcut in this case is the command key and the equals key. Uh, on a PC, this would be control key and uh, equals. And that will let you quickly flip over to the mix window. So here's our track. Now, notice that uh, right now we don't have anything going on in terms of inserts or any kind of sends. Um, but there is a little bit of routing that uh, I'll explain. I have the output of this vocal track, notice right here, going through one of the internal buses that I've labeled Vox Lead 1 and it's actually coming back on this auxiliary track and this is controlling the main output for that vocal track. Um, this is for some routing purposes much later on. So primarily we're going to use this to demonstrate how to uh, do sends and returns and be able to apply inserts such as uh, effects delays and effects reverbs uh, to achieve a, a sound that might be a little bit cooler than just listening to the dry vocal. So the first thing we're going to want to do is um, Notice that there's a send section right here, and you have five sends. You do have the ability to actually have ten sends within Pro Tools. We're just not currently viewing the other five. Now, when you click on a send point, you get this output menu, and um, notice there's a couple of things here. There's output, there's bus, and some new features that came into effect with Pro Tools 9 labeled track and new track, which uh, we'll actually be using in a second. Now, output reflects the physical output of your Pro Tools system. This means your hardware. Uh, we're not going to any hardware sends, so we won't be using anything output. What we're going to need to do is, using the internal bus structure of Pro Tools, we're going to route the audio signal via the send to a return track. Pro Tools does have a total of 256 buses, or that's 128 stereo pairs. Um, we're not going to use anywhere near that many, but uh, I do have a few that are currently being utilized, and you can see these in bold yellow right here. For the most part, we're not even going to have to worry about using the, the bus menu itself, because there's a great feature in Pro Tools now called New Track. Now, what this will actually allow you to do is to automatically create a send from your track, and it gives you a New Track dialog window, allowing you to pick the width of the track, either mono or stereo, and the type of track. Now for the purposes of an effect return we're going to utilize an auxiliary input in stereo and um, let's just name it Vox Effects 1. Now watch what happens. Notice that it automatically created a new auxiliary return track that is already labeled Vox Effects 1. The track now has an input labeled Vox Effects 1 and the original track has a send via bus that's labeled Vox Effects 1. That label that we put in via the new track dialog, that applies to the bus and to the return track name, keeping your session organized. Now, in order to be able to hear this, uh, we are going to have to solo it, just like we soloed the original vocal track. And if you notice right here, as we created the send, we also got a send window that popped up. Now, since a send is an output, it has the same sort of controls that your main output of a track would have, being level, mute, and pan. The difference here is that this fader and this mute and this pan is controlling the audio signal going over the bus internally within our mixing environment 
that's labeled VoxFX1 and being returned on the input of our VoxFX1 auxiliary track, which then feeds the audio signal to the main output of our system so we can hear it out of our speakers. Now, we go to the insert section of our return track, and this is where we would launch our effects plugin. So in this case, let's uh, just take a look at a delay, and we'll just use a simple delay that comes built in with Pro Tools, and it's called Long Delay. What's happening now is that audio signal is traveling from tape, or hard drive in this case, down the signal path of the track, going to the main output which feeds our speakers. But simultaneously, the audio signal is being split via an internal bus and returned to another track within the console. So we have the same signal side by side, and by putting this effects plugin that we have open here, now we're putting an effect just on the signal return and not affecting the main output that's going to the speakers. This has always been the case with mixing, because we, we do want some level of control over our effects the same way that we want control over our main audio tracks. There's no sense in having all the effects blaring loud all the time. You generally want some level of control. So if I just play this now with the faders all at zero, here's what we have. Another magical day. Magical day. The sun, the sun reflects, reflects on your face. On your face. Your eyes, your eyes, eyes. Notice the delay is pretty loud, just like the lead vocal, and they're kind of fighting one another. But the effect itself is kind of neat, and uh, I think we're even going to tweak this a little bit. We uh, we have this this delay locked to the tempo of our session at 130 BPM. So I'm just going to quickly click the 8th note button and the 16th note button. So the left side of the audio signal path is going to have an 8th note delay and the right side is going to have a 16th note delay. And at the same time, to not have the delay be any more emphasized above the lead vocal, I'm also going to bring down the fader on the return track. So that way it's still in the mix but it's not overpowering anything, it's just enhancing the original audio track. Another magical day The sun reflects on your face Your eyes, they sparkle like the clear blue That sounds a lot better already. Now, this same process can be repeated time and time again because the main thing that you want to keep in mind is that there's a million different kinds of effects out there. A delay is just one type, and a delay might only be one part of your entire effects chain. You might also want to add some sort of reverb or some sort of vocoder. Um, there's a plethora of different effects plugins out there, and depending on the genre of music, you might want to gravitate towards more or less depending on, on your own taste. But nonetheless, the process would be the same. If we want to do another effect, Let's say in this case we want to do a reverb along with the delay. What we're going to do is go back to our main, main audio track, our vocal track, click on the next send point, go to new track, and in this case we'll name this Fox Verb 1. And there we go, right next to our main track. We have another new auxiliary track called Vox Verb 1. The bus automatically named itself Vox Verb 1, and we're going from the send of the original track to the input of the return track. The only thing to keep in mind is that when you create this, the default setting in Pro Tools is that the send fader that you see here in this window always pops up at negative infinity. Now, if you want to quickly snap that back to zero, hold down the Option key, or this would be Alt for PC, and click on the fader and it snaps it back to zero. Alright, so now let's also solo this track and let's go to the ins insert section of this new effect return track and this time we'll launch a reverb. Let's say D-verb. Now Taste is something that is going to be dependent on your own songs. In this case, I might want to go for a small plate reverb just to get, kind of give it a little bit of ambience. And let's see what that sounds like. Let's mute the original delay that we had already created. Another magical day The sun reflects on your face 
Your eyes, they sparkle like the clear blue sky. The breeze is calling our name. You wrap your arms around my waist. I'll rest my head on your shoulder. You hold me. All right. You're going to have to play with any effects to get the kind of vibe that you want in your song. Every song is totally different, but the same principles apply in terms of routing. Now, you might want some sort of vocoder effect, or you might want some sort of echo. The way that you would go about setting up an effect, it doesn't change from session to session. It's become very easy to do this without having to actually delve deep into too many menus. Now, if we play both of these together, the original delay and the verb that we added on top of that and the original audio track another magical day the sun reflects on your face your eyes they sparkle like the clear blue sky in this case with this vocal what this delay and reverb did is kind of add a little bit more texture uh, a little bit more vibe to the uh, to the lead vocal. We weren't looking to overpower it, just to kind of enhance it a little bit. So let's just listen to it without any of the effects, and then I'll activate both of the effects so we can kind of get a comparison. Another magical day, the sun reflects on your face, your eyes they sparkle like the clear blue sky. Now, this, like I said before, applies to any kind of instrument, whether it's a guitar track or whether it's a snare track, whether it's any kind of audio track that you want to do an effect on. This is the ideal way to do it because it allows for independent control of the effect signal in your mix and independent control of your original audio track without the two fighting against one another. So I hope this was a little bit enlightening for everybody. Hope you have a little fun with this and your mixes get a, a whole lot uh, a whole lot groovier. See you soon.